Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Tatiana Show. It is September 13th, 2016, and I'm broadcasting to you live from New Jersey. We had a little bit of a technical hiccup this morning, but now we're back in business. Uh, one of our guests was not able to connect with us, but hopefully we'll have Jing Yi on with us another time. In the meantime, let's say to hello to those who are joining us. Uh, Josh from Voltoro, good friend and exciting member of The Tatiana Show. How are you today? Oh, unmute. I'm doing very well. I'm doing very well. I've just come back from London from a blockchain event in Helsinki. I've been, uh, I'm finally in the, uh, I'm just uh, in the flying high club. Hang on, um, what does that mean? Does that mean I, I don't know. No, that's that means something else, doesn't it? I mean, maybe that's what it means in your world, but I'm not sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, we, there was a fantastic um, uh, conference in Helsinki and we really, I met so many great people really good projects happening all over the world. It's so exciting to be alive at this time. Every time I go to any blockchain event or Bitcoin event or Ethereum event, I'm blown away by, by A, the, uh, the intelligence and the, uh, the, the capabilities and, and the, the imagination of these people. It, it, I think this whole space is really, really has some of the, the highest caliber of intelligent people in it, really. It, it's amazing. And you've got this great mixture of uh, crypto anarchy and, and uh, technical brilliance all mixed into one. It's, it's just genius. I love it. Don't you go to a lot of um, banking ones, though? Are they really looking for innovation? Um, I think they like to think they're innovative. And uh, it's amazing because I catch them out all the time. They just say the dumbest stuff, really. Uh, it's amazing. I, I said to one guy, you know. Everybody's well, new. Not everybody has something intelligent to say about Bitcoin just from the get-go. No, but but I'm, I guess my comment was to, to you saying that there's all these crypto anarchists, but I feel like you go to a lot more um, financial uh, type conferences. Yeah, I mean, they're coming to us more. Uh, these these banker types are coming more and more to these blockchain events and Bitcoin events. So it's uh, it's it's a bit of both. But really, what I find is that a lot of them try to look intelligent, try to say, "Oh yeah, blockchain," and then you talk to them a little bit deeper, and you realize they don't have a clue about what's going on. And then you say, "Have you you know set up a Bitcoin wallet before?" And they're like, "Oh no, no, no I've never tried it." And then you blow their mind by setting it up in 10 seconds and sending them some, and, and they, they really love it. But, uh, yeah. Okay. yeah. Anyhow, there's uh, great projects. And what, uh, a project that i am just been reading about now and, and our guest is bringing on board is extremely exciting, a decentralized social network. It's, uh, folks, stay tuned. And we, we've got to bring Gregory on. Yes, yeah, so I suppose we can do that. Um, I actually wanted to talk about a few things before we randomly went off uh, into the into the abyss. Um, but you know what? Yeah, actually, let's let's bring Greg on. He's been waiting for us patiently. Um, we've got scenario uh, coming up hot on the on the blockchain press, right? Um, they're doing a uh, ICO, I guess. I'm not really sure what you call it, but they're looking for people to become in, engaged in their project. They're doing something, I believe, on Bank to the Future. Greg, is that right? Are you guys on Bank to the Future? You're still muted. Oh. Okay, cool. Sorry. Yeah, there we go. Sorry about that. Yes, we are on Bank to the Future. Well, let's step back a bit. Let's uh, talk about the project um, uh, scenario. It uh, for, From first up, you know, it's a, a fully decentralized online social network, and that, that's that's I guess the uh, the sales pit, the the elevator pitch. Yeah, that's uh, right. But, that's uh, right. It, but, it's it's a little bit more than that, and and we, we didn't want it to be more than that, but we sort of have had we've been backed into that position. <laughs> um, uh, so so in particular, we're we're kind of late to the game in the sense of um, deciding to own the blockchain technology itself um, as a part of our dev process. So we had been hoping that the Bitcoin blockchain would be uh, a solution to um, at least the monetization part of, um, of our offering. 
So our, our offering is a little bit different than, than other um, social networks in the sense that, that we have a cryptocurrency associated with, um, uh, uh, I mean, well, we call it the attention economy, but, but it allows people to participate in the value proposition, right? I mean, uh, with, without That's, going... I, I want to start from the beginning because I feel like we're talking about scenario from the, from the middle, and I just want to know, okay, I don't know anything about this project. Who is your target audience and what are you trying to sell me? What's, what am I trying to participate in? What is scenario? Right. Okay. So, I mean, I could actually start at the top. I mean, the, yeah. our, uh, so, but for me, the top is our aims. What, mm -hmm. what, what, what do we hope to accomplish? Um, so for me, the, the, the real issue is that um, we are at a cusp in, in terms of human culture and human society. Right. There are a lot of really, really uh, hot, and I literally mean hot problems, um, like climate change. Like there are, there are ice lakes appearing in the Antarctic sheets. Um, just if I look outside my window right here, I don't know if you can, you can see my windows, um, but, but the Cascades have, have, I'm sorry, the Olympics have, have no snow on the top of them. <laughs> and and, and, it, and this, this kind of thing is only part of a growing trend. Um, uh, so I, I really uh, think we we're, we are literally melting the planet um, with our with our current lifestyle, and we need to we need a, a better social communication platform so that we can organize ourselves better, and a social communication platform that is connected to other ways of coordinating each other, uh, in particular financial ways of coordinating each other. So that's our aim. We're looking we're looking for a platform that enables a different kind of self determination. But what is it? And so, so is it like Facebook, is it? How do I use it? Right. So it's uh, again, it's somewhat like Facebook, um, in the sense that you can make posts and and you can read other people's posts. But it's a lot different from Facebook. Um, so one of the things that's that's uh, different is that you can make your um, your your feed, so to speak is completely in your control and it's also what we call a first class thing so when you make a feed that you like you can share that feed with others because uh, for example um, the tagging mechanism is uh, rich and sophisticated so tags tags are something that persist you know like you know a twitter tag a hashtag that kind of you know it comes into existence for all of five minutes and then disappears again it's really just sort of about being a little bit clever. It's not about persistently accessing information. In Scenario, uh, by design, we can't see any of the content that's posted. So this is, this is a, major, a major design point for us. This, the network and, and none of the nodes um, as nodes can see any of the content that's shared between the users. Okay, that's by design. So you have to subscribe to a channel or to a feed. That's exactly. How would you hear about them in the first place? Right. So they have to be they have to be shared amongst uh, the various users. So so you get it's it's just like remember the old days of LinkedIn when if you didn't know anyone um, who could invite you to LinkedIn, you were staring at a blank wall, or if you didn't know anyone you could connect to in LinkedIn, you were staring at a blank wall. It's a similar kind of thing. So the network effect is. Is, is created through lots and lots of consent. So any connection is, a, is done by mutual consent, which reduces the signal to noise ratio on any particular feed and through any different connections. Um, so once you're subscribed to a feed, can you participate and add to that feed? Yep, that's exactly right. Um, although that, that's, all, that's, also, that's, also, that's also under control, right? So that's under the control of those who, who um, it, like the connection that you get to the feed um, uh, uh, is um, can can be uh, can be uh, created so that you have you don't have only read access, for example. Okay, and and so, all right. So the admin, so the person who creates the the, the feed in the first place, the person, the, the, yeah, the, the the quality of the connection be between the user, uh, one user and the other, is what determines that, right? And so that that has to do with how how the connection is established. And so a feed is really a connection for us. 
um, that a feed is just a connection, but it can, it can be a connection between an individual and an individual or between an individual and a group or between a group and a group. Now, this uh, is a decentralized network. So how much data is being, uh, where does the blockchain come in? How much data is being added to the blockchain? Right. So this is what I was trying to get to it from the, for, at the beginning before we got derailed. So the, the, um, the Bitcoin blockchain won't support data uh, at this, that, that would, that would um, work with a social network. And we knew, we knew that from the outset, but we thought that we could, we could um, sort of, have, I built a content uh, a management system, a content delivery system uh, that was decentralized. And I began that work in 2010. Um, and uh, we were just starting to get to the point where we wanted to monetize that content uh, network uh, system, uh, content delivery network. Uh, when I, you know, saw that Bitcoin might provide a solution. Um, and, uh, and that's when I, Dora and I sort of independently came up with the idea of the attention economy, which is by which you can, you can use a cryptocurrency to promote posts. Right. So, uh, so you can actually see videos from our recent scenario governance conference where we gave a, gave a demo of being able to, you know, attach amps to a post and have the, have the post, um, uh, um, reach, reach more users. Right. Um, but the, uh, the, uh, what we discovered was that even the side by side, you know, sort of, have, you know, content management network that's handling all the data, content delivery network that's handling all the data, and um, and j and using the blockchain just for the financial part of it was not neither secure nor performant. Um, so we we knew that the Bitcoin blockchain was not going to scale. Um, so I began working very closely with um, Ethereum. So I work regularly with Vitalik and Vlad uh, and a number of other uh, researchers in um, uh, that space. Um, and uh, we, the um, we, came up with, uh, we came up with the Casper proof of stake algorithm to get to sort of move the blockchain technology one step closer to scaling. And then at a certain point, we realized that um, that wasn't going to uh, completely fit our needs either. So, so we have an evolved, uh, we, we've evolved to a new blockchain um, technology, which we call our chain. And there, there's enough throughput uh, and enough scale while remaining decentralized that we can put all the data on the blockchain itself. Why so, do people need that data on the blockchain? I'm still, I'm having a hard time understanding why a user would f find this compelling. Like, why would I want to use this instead of any other, where, where's the advantage for me? Because so far it seems extremely confusing and I'm, I'm like, you know, and arguably I would be a target market, right? Just your average user. Or is this specifically focusing for uh, people that are interested in blockchain specifically, uh, like technology just for its, itself? Like, how would this reach a regular person? Because so far, I'm still not understanding why I would want to use it. Like, what would the advantage be? Would it be that I can make money off of it? Would it be that I want to talk about, um, you know, uh, weird stuff that the government doesn't want me to say? You know, what, what is, what are, where do I connect with this? Awesome. No, I think that's a great question. I, I really appreciate your perspective. Um, so... So, so shifting gears from uh, the technological and market requirements to just, you know, how an ordinary person thinks about this. Um, I think a lot of um, people are not super um, concerned about privacy right now. Um, and that, that could be okay, right? I mean, a lot of people make, uh, make comments about um, privacy and, and their concerns about Snowden and what Snowden revealed on Facebook. All right, so out of, out of one side of their mouth, they're, they're acting concerned, but they're posting it on Facebook itself. So let's just talk a little bit about the Facebook proposition, right? Uh, and, 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 and by extension, other, other centralized social media propositions. So first and foremost, all your data belongs, all the data you post on Facebook belongs to Facebook. End of story. Um, sec, uh, and, and Facebook has shown that they're susceptible to a number of different um, issues. So number one, at any given time, the NSA can knock on Facebook's corporate office doors and say, we need the data for this particular user, and here's a court order 
from a secret court. So you and I, we can't see how that court operated, how that came to that decision, or even the court order itself. Uh, but, but, but the NSA can ask for that data, right? So maybe most people don't care about that. Some people do care about that, but maybe most people don't care about that. But Facebook has also shown that they're susceptible, and, and that may just be the cost of doing business in the United States, right? Maybe, uh, maybe that's just, just how things are if you're gonna engage in business in the United States. But let's, let's look at it from, a, from another level. Facebook has shown that it's also susceptible to a different kind of use of, of people's data. So Facebook has published papers in high-profile psychology journals in which they report on the results of, of changing people's moods by manipulating the feed, by manipulating their feed. Okay, so we know that Facebook is bad, they're manipulating information. How is scenario different? So, well, I've already given you clues to that, but let me just complete the, complete the story. Sure. It's a little bit bigger than just 10 second sound bites. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, okay, so, so maybe people are willing to, to live with that, I don't know. But there's another issue here, and the other issue is that um, Facebook is making billions of dollars in profit per quarter per quarter, and users, the ordinary users, do not participate in that economic boom, okay? Mm -hmm. Right, they're, they're, they're not paid out by Facebook. Now let's compare that to 50 years ago, right? The, the, the equivalent instrument for social communication 50 years ago was the New York Times, okay? And if you think about it, the content generators for the New York Times and the content curators for the New York Times were the New York Times staff and they got paid quite well. Today, Facebook gets all of that labor for free. The laborers who are making the, 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 the content valuable don't participate in the economic boom. Okay, so, so, so now, now let's put the two together. So on, on the one hand, you know, people may say, you know what, I don't wanna deal with a giant pharma servers. I don't wanna deal with, you know, data centers. I don't wanna deal with, with you know, the issue of all the heat that they're spewing out and all the security. I, I want someone else to do that. So, so I'm gonna hand over the economic opportunity to Facebook. Maybe they might feel comfortable with that. But then you add on top of that, the security issues and the privacy issues and the way in which people's feeds are being manipulated. And now they're not only being screwed economically, they're being screwed in terms of the privacy and the trust. And so that's a, that's a serious problem, right? And I don't think very many people are happy with that situation at all. So with Scenario, you get to participate both in the economic uh, uh, engine, right? So the content creators and the content curators using the AMP cryptocurrency can participate in the economics of, of the information economy. And in addition, uh, they, can, uh, uh, they can be assured of privacy. So Scenario doesn't have a giant server farm. Instead, everybody has their own devices. I'm sitting here on a laptop, you're sitting there on a laptop, and you can run a node locally to your device, or if there's someone that you trust to host your node, you can go to them, right? But that's entirely in your control, that's entirely up to you to do, right? You can go to our, our um, Git, GitHub repo right now, you can pull down the Docker, uh, the Docker image, and you can launch your node right now, and you can run yeah, that. Yeah, but how do they do that? That, that, that okay. sounds something that like, yeah, a, normal like a normal person, person would, would want to. Like, like I've been I, in crypto, and I barely know what a node is. You know, so why would somebody normal think that that was appealing, or would that be kind of hidden behind the user experience? Well, I, I think that in, you know, in the same way that that you know, my mother or my grandmother, my grandmother certainly doesn't know anything about um, uh, Google Hangouts. And she's very unlikely to know about Google Hangouts, right? She's 102 and it's probably not gonna enter into her lifetime. But, but most of, like my children, they're quite capable of doing something like that. And in fact, in fact, when I talk to the 20-somethings, um, the next generation, they're much more uh, technically advanced and I think they'll be perfectly, um, perfectly happy with that kind of experience or with an experience that's slightly smoother, 
So o over time, I think we, we all learn how to have new experiences that are grounded in technology. So I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to put a line on what's normal just yet. I think that's, that would, that's a, it's, a little, it's a little premature to say that we know what's normal, um, especially given the, the pace at which technology is evolving. Um, so so um, I have a question. Yeah. The, um, you know, MySpace, when it was out, it was this social network where everyone was just trying to get as many friends as possible and, and you're building this network and that was the thing. And then Facebook came along and made it a lot more about the real friends you've got, the real networks that you've got in, in, in uh, your life and extended that. And that became a lot, more, a lot more valuable because you actually cared about the information coming to you. So when someone posts something on um, you know, face uh, on MySpace, it was just this sort of thing and you don't really care. If someone that you know in real life posts something, you, you want to watch it because it's interesting. It is, is where in that, you know, level, that scale is, uh, are you guys aiming at? Yeah, so that, no, that, I'm so glad you asked that question because that, that, that's exactly what I was referring to when I said that con connections in the scenario network are all about consent. So, so what we find is that when you, when you like, like with the, the, the same kind of thing happens with Facebook where in order to be friends, the two friends have to accept, right? So there's a little tiny protocol. So we have a similar kind of protocol called the introduction protocol, but it's decentralized. So that the parties who are creating a connection have to consent. They both have to be kind of on the same page. Uh, not only that, that, they're, that they're entering into this connection, but the kind of connection they're entering into. And once they, once they have consent about this kind of connection, then, then what you find is that the signal to noise ratio vastly increases. Like I, 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 can't, I can't even pay attention to Twitter anymore because the signal to noise ratio is just below the threshold that's valuable to me. Whereas with Facebook, you know, it's, it's kind of, you know, it, it's just better enough that I, I do pay attention to Facebook because, because of the, there's this element of consent, consensual connection. Right and, and and mutual mutuality as a part of the engagement, yeah. So I, I'm really glad you brought that up, and that's what scenario is organized around. Um, so people can basically post any type of content that they want, uh, videos, pictures, comments, that kind of thing. So right now we have everything up through um, uh, uh, pictures and, and things like that. The streaming stuff mm -hmm. is is going to come online later. We do not have a good streaming solution. Um, and streaming solution in a decentralized way with security and, and monetization is hard. It's just technically hard. <laughs> we just can't take on all of it. Um, but yeah, you can, you can go all the way, all the way up through pictures and, and little audio clips. But once, we, once we start talking about, uh, and even little tiny video clips, so what if streaming solutions, we just don't have a good streaming solution. What if someone posts something that they regret later? They want to take it back down. How does that work? Um, so the 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 most important thing is that you can change. You can you can certainly uh, you can take things down, but you have to be careful that um, some of these some of these posts can be forwarded on. So if they're forwarded on, you're out of luck, right? So mm -hmm. that de that depends upon um, the social contract that you wrap around. So one one thing to understand is that every post is its own little smart contract or what we call social contract. So every post is its own little contract uh, that runs on top of, uh, initially right now it runs on the content um, uh, delivery network, eventually it will run on top of our chain. And that, uh, that, that little contract controls how the posts can flow and who can engage with the post and who can. And so if you set up the policy in the right way, and, and this becomes, this right now is, this is for nerds, but over, what we're hoping is that people become more and more aware of the issues like you're talking about, of the tension between reach and privacy, between, you know, uh, risk and promotion, right? So those are, the, those are the kinds of things that people have to become aware of. And when that tension gets really, really super high, right, then people will be um, incentivized to learn the contracting language enough that they can um, that they can write write little little policies about how these things flow that will that will serve their purposes. 
Could I go into the economics a little bit? Yeah, I know that Steam has had a lot of controversy because of uh, uh, a people saying it's not as decentralized as they say. Uh, but then the uh, the economic side of it is um, is being picked apart. Uh, I'm just wondering how, how what's the incentive to buy? I, because in these sort of scenarios where you, you're incentivizing with the currency you need people you need buyers on the other side to say to add actual uh, uh you know the, the value is coming in the post for sure but you need to give the currency value by having a price discovery system through trading with other valuable assets um yeah so yeah. I, I mean, let, me, let me let me address that because i think you, you, you again you put your finger on a really important point so the so, um, and, and we've, we've, we've hit this from a number of different sub-communities. Um, let, let me take a, a really good example. So we talk about scientific publication. Right now, there's an illusion that scientific publication is divorced from capital. The reality is behind the scenes, every scientist is funded by various grants, and those grants are, are a part of a much larger social vetting process, right? And so there's, there's no such thing as a... As a scientific publication that isn't, you know, that doesn't have money attached to it. Um, but, but the public perception is that when you, when, when someone posts an article on archive or, or some of these, or the, you know, uh, PLS, uh, PLOS one, um, that they're somehow free of monetary concerns. Right. And so for, uh, so for a long time, if we want to use scenario to foster scientific communication, um, that has to be done largely in terms of reputation, um, right? Scientific reputation. And, and that's why we have, to, we have two things, right? It's not just about AMPS. It's also about RIO, right? So the RIO part of scenario is, is the reputation score. Um, and the reputation score derives from relative standing in the community. Right. Uh, so speaking of community, let's say we have Abed and Troy, right? Um, and, and, and we look at their common community between, between Abed and Troy. So their common community might include Pierce and Shirley and, and Jeff and Britta uh, and Annie, right? Those are the people. And if Abed has a, has a network of bots behind him, as Abed might, right? The likelihood that Troy is going to be connected to Abed's bots is really, really tiny. Likewise, if Troy, you know, has paid someone to stand up a, a network of bots behind him, the likelihood that Abed is going to be connected to those bots is very, very tiny. So we only look at their common connections. And between their common connections, if Abed's um, content is engaged more frequently than Troy's content, then Abed's relative standing in their common community is higher. And because it's higher, um, when Abed posts over time, the network begins to adapt and, and put his, his content more central into the feeds of uh, Pierce and Shirley and um, uh, uh, Jeff and Annie, etc. Right, does that make sense? Yeah, so yeah, that's so a, a mechanism, mechanism to stop, stop. Uh, Sybil attacks, is that right? Sybil well, attack is... Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's it, it, it's one it's one way to avoid a civil attack, but it's reputation based, and so and so what I'm trying to say is that there's a reputation score that's balancing the the funding score. So you could have right. you could have an, a, a scientific conversation, a scientific debate on scenario, that was completely divorced of any uh, amps. Right. Right. You, no one no one had to have any amps at, uh, uh, attached to their posts because they, were, they wanted this to be somehow economically clean, right, with, with mm. devoid of any economic incentivization. And, and the network would support that conversation. Interesting. Um, so just for the folks that don't know what a civil attack is at home, it's, it's basically when you create a whole bunch of other accounts and pretend they're other people, but they're all controlled by you. And you can then manipulate uh, things on a, on a social network. Um, uh, one question I have about scalability is the, the, the fact that if, if I run a node, A, am I, am I uh, repeating or uh, transmitting all this information that's coming through on the entire social network? Oh, that's so great. I'm so glad you asked that. So that's one of the, one of the central reasons why we ended up not going with a Casper-based Ethereum 2.0. 
So like, I mean, we, we definitely want to collaborate and interoperate with the, the next version of Ethereum. The Ethereum 1.0 is just never going to meet our needs. Uh, it's, it's, it's still a proof of work based blockchain and everything, everything that goes into any one node goes to every other node. Um, uh, Ethereum 2.0 uh, will be Casper based, but it still won't have the kind of um, sharding mechanism that we require. So in, in particular, we need to be able to subdivide the network into lots of little pieces and then, and then potentially have those subdivided and potentially have those subdivided so that not every node has to have every piece of data. And we need to be able to do that in a way that you can still maintain consistency around the network, right? So that those people who, who have to agree on the state, right? You know, like my node has seen this data, in this order and you're noticing this data in this order because we have to agree on the state, right? We, we, we need to be able to, to, to provide that. And the Ethereum, one point, uh, the Ethereum 2.0 sharding solution won't provide that. In addition, they're also not doing, their, their Casper algorithm is, um, is, is still more block oriented than we believe will provide th throughput. Um, so, so that's another aspect of scaling. Um, so, so in Tatiana, in terms of, um, you know, sort, sort of for, for the normal people, <laughs> whoever they might be, um, if you think about normally, if you're going down to the coffee shop and you're about to, you're about to buy a latte, you, you really don't want it to be the case that that transaction has to be serialized or placed in order with someone in Tokyo who's about to buy some sushi, right? And in fact, most of the time, those, those kinds of uh, transactions are completely isolated. They have nothing whatsoever to do with each other. Um, and, uh, and, and so there's no reason for there to be any sort of consensus algorithm run on those because they're isolated. There's no need to, for any kind of agreement or any sort of you know, worry or concern that they're in the same scope. So our, our approach to the blockchain allows us to say, you know what, actually 90% of the time, transactions are not stepping on each other's toes so they can just go through. Um, and if they just go through, then that, mean, that means that we, can, we don't have to worry about um, any sort of consensus algorithm. We don't have to slow that down. And so we're hoping that our throughput rates allow us to get to what, what, what the ordinary uh, people on the Internet uh, have come to know and love, which is Facebook kinds of scaling together with Visa uh, uh, and MasterCard kinds of scaling, right? Yeah, people really want that fastness. That's, that's exactly right. When, yeah. when you delete a post, when you edit a post, you know, uh, is, are you basically taking the right away to see the information that's in the blockchain beforehand? Because in the, I mean, blockchain's immutable, right? So all you're doing is, is, is changing, uh, adding something to the database, but, but the original post is still there. And that's, I guess, encrypted. And so uh, you have to uh, somehow take the key away for other people to see that. Yeah, so, so it, isn't, it isn't, yeah, I mean, you can think about it a key, but, but, but think about it more like a link, right? So if, if what you're, if what you, what you put, and again, we're not putting it on the blockchain, we're not putting it on the Bitcoin blockchain, but, it, but if you want to use that as an approximation, think about this, what you're, what you're going to put up on the blockchain is a link, right, to some data. Now, now let's say we, we, we break the link, so the link doesn't point to the data. The chain hasn't changed, but the linking to the data has changed. And so now you can't see it anymore. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. Um, uh, Tatiana? Um, I think you guys went off a little bit into the weeds for me, but... Um, okay, okay. <laughs> all right, so when is, this, uh, when is the Bank to the Future campaign and when can an average person start using Scenario? Uh, average person? Ugh, I don't know. Um, I don't know who's average anymore. <laughs> Um, so, so, so why don't, why don't we, was so a bank to the future? Maybe not grandma, maybe your little cousin. When can my little cousin start using scenario? Grandma's a little bit, uh, when's there going to be, I guess, like a beta of when you're going to be kind of onboarding yeah. regular users? Yeah. So l let me turn this around a little bit. First of all, let me answer the question I can answer simply. So I, I, I believe internally, um, that, that we've said that the, um, the, uh, uh crowd sale goes live on the 19th of September. Um, mm -hmm. so that's very short. Right. That's like in six days. Um, and then um, uh, uh, the, other, the other answer is, what, what would you want as a normal person to start using um, Scenario? Do you, you want to just log into a website? Is that what you want? Yeah, that's what I would say 
as using it as like an initial thing, just having somewhere to log in and, and check it out. Okay, so you, 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 you basically want to trust the hosting to somebody else. You don't, you don't care whether you host your, your own node. I'm just trying to do an interview and find out when I can use the, your, your product. That's all. <laughs> you know, I think that that's a pretty basic question. When can no, no, people no, no, use, but, what do you but, mean by use it? I'm like, I don't know, log into something, see yeah, what yeah, you're but, selling. But but it's it's a, it's a little it's a little bit because like some like some people actually really really care about this. You some users in the community do not want to be logging into a separate site um, because they don't trust these other sites. They want things more under their control. And I think what what you've just revealed here in this little interchange is that for you you're you you don't have any of those those trust worries or trust concerns. Um, no. Yeah, and that's cool. But then I kind of wonder why you're in the blockchain arena at all because most people who are no, in the I mean I wonder why somebody would make something that normal people can't understand and then question why they're so stupid as to not understand them no no I, I'm not I'm not saying I'm, I'm not I'm saying just saying like why can't you just give me a straight I, answer like no, no, when I mean, can I use this well <laughs> very simple I mean, you, 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 can, you can use it right now but 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 the issue is that you don't you want us to pay for hosting the web the the, the server well, it's your no, website. Why would I no, pay for your hosting? No, that's the important thing. It's not a website, and that's what I'm trying to get at. It's not a website. It's not a centralized service. It's a decentralized service. And that's okay, when so can what, people what, use I the guess, decentralized service? Right, so decentralized means that, that we're not paying for hosting. We don't host. Other people... But when can people hosting. start using this? People can use it right now. Well, how do they do that? You you go to the GitHub repo, you download the Docker image, and you start start the Docker image, and then you can then you can log in. And there's a there's a video. There are actually several videos of do, how to do this. Um, okay. But, yeah, but we can we can we can post those links to you a little bit later. Yeah, I that'd be great because this way, if people you know if people want to learn about it but they didn't really quite get it from the show, they can go and check it out directly. Yeah. Uh, so we'll be putting that in the show notes, guys. Yeah. yeah and absolutely. then, how long is the how long is the Bank to the Future campaign? I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to. Oh. I'll have to check. I'll have to check with Dor. Okay. Um, we'll, we'll, put, we'll put the link to that as well. Yeah, for sure. What I'd like to, what I'd like to see is um, a, an app that, that's a little package uh, without too much worries. Where you double click and it and it launches and it for the end user and then because yeah. I think there's a lot of people that really want privacy, uh, like Tatiana, I'm sure wants privacy and understand, but doesn't want to go on a large learning curve so should, you know uh, so, some application that's pre-packaged and you double click and it launches and there's yeah there's, yeah um, no, yeah exactly and that's kind of what, what i was hoping we would get to yeah uh, you know so so something that's that's as smoothly packaged as, as that you know probably will have that out um in in the next quarter I mean, right right now we're we're largely focused on developers. We're not really focused on on end users. We're 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 focused on propeller heads, right? Well, that's the step. Always in technology, you have to go for the hardcore, and then it gets easier, and the UX gets easier and better and, and nicer. So it's yeah, that's that's exactly right, and that's kind of the way we're doing it. Yeah, I mean, so like at the at the governance conference, most most of the people there were totally happy with hacker space kind of. Kind of stuff, yeah. And it, it, you know, it's gonna. There's a there's a there's a long tail before before we get to something that's a smooth and uh, and um, you know viable sort of end user experience. And and uh, Tatiana, I mean, I was I was really just gathering what your requirements were. I mean, I'm not, and I'm not. Well, I mean, I I don't know. I just think it's a basic question. You know, like when can I use it? And yeah, yeah. But like, I don't think that an average person is going to go to a GitHub anything. Um. So the question was more. When can the average person get? And you said what in the first the user, quarter of next the year? Uh, for, no, within the next quarter. So we're yeah. Oh, so okay. First, first, yeah, first, first quarter of next year, I guess. Yeah. So we're in September, right? So yes. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So by yeah. Christmas time, hopefully, people will be able to try it out and. Uh, oh no! Their... I, I, no, please be careful. People can try it out right now, right? But okay. What, yeah, let's not conflate the, the 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 demographic that you're calling people with the demographic that we're calling people. Uh, okay. I, well, yeah. uh, all the all the all the nerds can can participate now. No, that, I'm just that, that's that's exactly right. Cool. Well, thank you so much for for being on the show. Um, we're going to be providing links if people want to find out more. What website should they go to? Uh, scenario.com. Scenario. Spell that for me one more time, just in case for listeners that don't have a. Sure. S is in Sam. Y. N is in Nancy. E. R as in Roger. E. O. 
as in Oscar. Excellent. Scenario. All right, great. So um, yeah, uh, thank you very much for, for, yeah. for joining us today. And a couple announcements before we you know, wrap things up this week. Um, of course, uh, there's freeross.org. I always like to give them a plug. Make sure that you're supporting the uh, Ross Ulbricht, Free Ross Ulbricht Fund. Um, we're doing a really cool Rossathon on October 2nd. So a lot of different people will be joining us. We're going to be talking about, you know, the drug war and how people can help with the appeal. Um, we've got upcoming conferences include uh, La BitConf, which is Latin American Bitcoin Conference. Uh, Greg, will you be going down to Buenos Aires for that? Uh, no, no. I, I'm, I'm doing the, the, the Ethereum DevCon to Shanghai, and then I have to be heads down for quite some time. Well, sometimes you've got to be heads down. That makes sense. Um, we've also got an Acapulco next year in February, uh, Jeff Berwick's event in Acapulco, which will be a lot of fun. We got a new sponsor, CryptoCompare.com, which they reached out to me. They're actually sponsoring a lot of different cool podcasts, and they have all this different information for trading, and I thought that it seemed actually usable, and I was excited about it. So check it's out really cool. CryptoCompare. And, yeah, of course, uh, the blockchain... Oh, okay, nice. Well, the blockchain CPA, also Kirk Phillips, he's been doing my taxes for basically six months now of torture. <laughs> so I got to give him a little love. If you guys are trying to do your taxes in Bitcoin and you're crying and drinking too much as a result, you can call up Kirk and he can give you all the help that you need. Um, thank you, everyone. We'll see you next week. Take care. Uh, check out TatianRose.com or uh, CryptoMediaHub.com if you want to find out more about me, Voltoro.com. Thanks again to our special guest. And, and we'll see you guys. all next week. Yeah, good awesome. luck with Oh, the wait, there's a magic or... word. Magic word. We need oh. a magic word. What's going to be word? the magic word? Oh, oh, I got I got one for you. Stella Marina. Go ahead. Stella Marina? Is that yeah. one word? It's what a, does yeah, that have to do with anything? I mean, a, I'll go with it, but... It's Italian for it's starfish. A, and we just we just did a, a, a performance in, in which this was uh, this was our magic word. Okay, fine. So Stella mm -hmm. Marina, two words, guys. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Take care. I'll talk to you soon. Peace out. Bye. Ciao. So